hustle culture is killing us. Hey, Star Being. Welcome back to the Courageous Embodiment Podcast, a place where gender nonconforming AFABs can just be themselves. And a big part of my life that has been impacting me recently is hustle culture. And it always finds its way to weasel back into my life, even working from home and dictating my own schedule, it pops up. And I forget the physical and mental impacts that hustle culture has on all of us. And I feel like this is something we should talk about more. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get into it. Hustle culture is this idea that our value is equated to our productivity, which is just untrue. And I've talked about that a lot on my past podcasts. Your value does not come from your output, your production. And this is most impactful to BIPOC people and disabled people because this this value system of worth being productivity and output is so deeply ingrained, especially in the States, and how we function and how society sees value and worth, how a lot of laws and things like this are being dictated is from this core value of hustle culture. We must constantly produce. And I, it's so deeply ingrained that I don't even think we sometimes realize the impact that it's happening. And how do we pull ourselves out of this hustle culture when it is so deeply ingrained in everything? When society is telling us this is the value, how do we work against that but still succeed in life? It's messy. It's complicated. And I know that for me, I really live in a place of privilege where I currently am in my life, but it wasn't always like this. I remember living on my own and working full time while also trying to graduate high school and also trying to stick through all of the trauma of my past, of the abuse, of not having a family and truly being on my own and trying to figure out how to be an adult when I've never had an example like that. Fucking stressful and talk about hustle culture. Oh, yeah. We're not getting into all of that, but it is such a big part of everyone's life at some capacity. And it's celebrated. Working until you're about to drop is so celebrated. It's wild to me. Why? Why is that where we put the importance in society? I can tell you, to make people fucking money and this factory worker mentality. And it's gotten to such a bad place. So I want to talk about how hustle culture affects your body, how to recognize the signs and signals, because recently for me, it's been creeping up a lot and... I didn't realize it until I was really deep in it and my body is heavily impacted and I'm making these adjustments to get back into a state of thriving in my body. And I wanted to share that experience with you in hopes that it will inspire you and help you see how this stress is impacting you physically and how to counterbalance it so that you can feel good in your body and feel good in your self-worth and your mental health and things like this. So let's talk about physical first. Especially, you guys know, I cater all of my content to gender nonconforming AFAB specifically. So we're talking a lot about the AFAB hormone cycle. If you're curious about AMAB hormone cycles and how that impacts you, you can always reach out to me personally and we can get into it. But let's talk about the AFABs and how it impacts us. So what hustle culture promotes is stress. And we are, our bodies are so dictated by this beautiful dance of hormones that runs on a 28 to 35 day cycle and stress or cortisol being one of those hormones. And it's actually really important to the function of our body to get things done, to regulate our blood pressure, to regulate our metabolism, to regulate our sleep and sleep and wake cycle. It has a beautiful part to play in the orchestra of our hormones. 
However, when it's also out of balance, it wreaks havoc on all of our hormones. High cortisol levels, you're going to, when initially it starts to happen, you're going to feel on top of the fucking world. This happens in, it happens in a cycle that repeats. So first part of the cycle is feeling on top of the world. You have all of the energy. You're getting all of the shit done. You feel like a fucking boss at everything that you're doing. And you are constantly going. So you're not giving yourself time to rest. Go. And then you start to feel a little stressed, a little anxious, like you can't keep up. This is the second phase. This is when your cortisol levels, your body is running out, right? Because it's been producing so much that it's got, you have, it's got to force you into a state of rest in order to produce more. So you have this high peak of energy and then the energy starts to decline, but you still have that stress or that danger signal to your nervous system that you need to get stuff done and you have to get it done now but then why can't I get it done and I am getting anxious and my brain is cloudy and everything's foggy but I'm still going to push myself through because that's what I need to do and then you crash and this is the next phase this is when you hit that depressive phase you don't want to get out of bed a lot of us at this point because our immune system from the high cortisol levels and the fatigue of cortisol our immune systems will decline. So a lot of times our body will actually physically get ill, a flu or a cold, and it will force us into that rest. And then when we come out of that rest, if we're not actually taking advantage of the rest and allowing ourselves to heal, we're going to get that kick of cortisol back in and our body's going to prioritize getting out of danger. Because that's how your body's interpreting the stress that's happening. Our nervous system has two sides. We have a side of our nervous system that is called fight or flight. It is the side of our nervous system that puts us into action. This is the go-go. This is when we're at peak energy. This is where our cortisol is at its highest. But then we have the flip side of our nervous system, which is rest and digest and heal. This is what our cortisol levels in when balance should be at its lowest point, right? So that your body can fluctuate between action and rest. And it should be this beautiful balance that fluctuates for AFABs in particular day by day, but also different phases of our cycle throughout the 28 to 35 day hormone cycle that we have, right? We have some parts of our hormone cycle where we do need to rest more and we have parts of our cycle where action is going to feel more appropriate in our body. So it's this beautiful orchestra. I really love it. I love calling it an orchestra. It is such a beautiful symphony once you learn how your hormones operate. It's this little fun thing. And I've totally lost my train of thought, as I do on these podcasts, but that's the joy and fun in it. But cortisol, we have fight or flight, right? So we can do both. Our nervous system can't both heal and be in fight or flight. It has to do one or the other. So when you get that email, from your boss that says we need to talk and doesn't give any details and you start to stress the fuck out if you're going to lose your job your body can't tell a difference between a stressor and being mauled by a bear like an actual life-threatening event and so when that cortisol level kicks in your body is going to deprioritize everything else so your cortisol levels are going to peak it's going to be its main focus as we talked about that cycle right it's going to give you all the cortisol levels and push the adrenaline and get you going until it runs out. And then it's going to force you to rest and then get back into it and just a continuous cycle. So what happens when it's deprioritizing things and what is it deprioritizing? It's deprioritizing your digestion. So you'll have a lot of pain. And the best example I can think of for this is when you have an event coming up or a really big test or a really big meeting or that meeting with your boss that I just talked about in that email, that you don't know what, you, what they need to talk to you about and maybe you might be losing your job. When things like that happen, you'll notice knots in your stomach where you feel sick or, you know, when cortisol is really high and you're actually getting that fatigue and you're running out and your body's about to force you to rest. I've even had instances where I wake up 
and I'm so tired that I'm nauseous because your body is deprioritizing digestion. It's not important right now. And the other side of this is your body will also start to disable the cues to tell you that you're hungry. So you may find yourself work and you look up 10 hours have passed and you've not eaten a single thing and not and you have not drinking any water because your body hasn't signaled to you that you're hungry or you're thirsty or that you need these things because it's viewing that stressor of that project as priority and a life or death situation. So you don't need to eat. That's not priority. You don't need to regulate your hormones or your cycle or your moon. AFABs, you know, that's the worst time of the month that we typically hate. When we get to our moon, our body deprioritizes it, which is our moon is dictated by the whole hormone cycle, right? So you can see how all of this is intertwined in that symphony I talk about all the time. And so we have the digestion piece that's gone to shit because our cortisol and stress is too high. And now we have our cycle that is irregular, non-existent, or when it does happen, it's so painful, it's debilitating. And if you have hormonal imbalances like PCOS or endometriosis, it's going to cause flare-ups. If you have any type of disability like fibromyalgia, I could list a few others, but disabilities are heavily impacted by this. And they're the most impacted by this expectation with their disability to function and be productive because that's where the worth and value is for human beings. And it's just not true. And I'm going to repeat that. I really want that to sink in and land for you. Your worth is not your ability to produce. And for AFABs, your worth is not your ability to reproduce. And that's another thing. And this is a, a whole different side tangent rabbit hole. But I fucking hate how the cycle tracking apps that are very beneficial to our health and wellness as AFABs are all geared towards women specifically and the it's focused on fertility which yes knowing relation and when that's happening in your hormone cycle is important that's why we're at our peak energy there's a lot of things we can glean for that but literally all of the apps are fertile not fertile fertile not fertile and I think there should, I'm going to work on creating this. I'm definitely going to work on creating this. I think I might create a Patreon. Stay tuned. I might create a Patreon about this so we can start saving up money to create an app that we can track our hormone cycle, know when our cortisol levels are too high, know when there's disruptions and patterns, but be able to choose. Do you want it to be fertility-based or not? So that way we have accessible care and knowledge that's not misgendering us or feels overwhelming and maybe I can send little reminders on there to help you depending on what phase of your cycle and to help you elevate your mental physical health yeah we're just getting this download right now this app is coming I already I'm gonna make it happen I don't know all logistics yet you're literally seeing it first here but yeah definitely stay tuned for that because I want to create this space for things like this hustle culture and let me tell you how it's impacting me right now. I know all of this stuff. I'm a coach in this stuff and I'm still impacted and it still creeps in on me. I am responsible for a lot of things at the job that I work at, as well as in my own business as a coach. That's a lot of pressure and responsibility. I have a team that I pay and I'm responsible for their families. And that's a lot of stress, but it's also really beautiful. And it's about finding the balance. But I noticed recently, in the past three to four weeks that I'm not hungry, I'm tired, I'm foggy, I feel like I have this endless list of tasks that I just can't seem to get done and I've lost inspiration. And I actually, I go to the Queer Gym. If you guys are interested in the Queer Gym, you should check it out. They're on Instagram at the Queer Gym. I go there and they have a health coach because coaches need coaches too. And I needed the accountability to get back into these good habits to promote the low cortisol levels. And we're doing this thing right now where we're taking, I'm taking pictures of all my meals. And that brought me like scary awareness to how little I was eating because I was stuck. I'm, I've been allowing myself to get stuck in this cortisol trap in this cycle and it needs to be broken. I noticed I was eating maybe once a day and I've been gaining a little bit of weight, but I've been going to a gym and working out or it's a virtual gym, but going to this queer gym. Oh, also 
if you tell them I sent you, you get $100 off your right. membership. Shameless plug here because it is such an amazing gym. Yeah. If you're a gender non-conforming person, they are fucking amazing. And I think, it's a, I think it's $100 off if you tell them that I sent you. So definitely check that out. But we've been, yeah, taking pictures of my food. And I noticed I was eating like once a day, but then I'm gaining weight while I'm also working out and I'm feeling shitty. And I'm like, this isn't normal. Usually when I'm working out and eating healthy, I feel good. I was talking to my coach about it. Like, let's look at what you're eating. Let's actually look at the routine that's happening so we can take baby steps and small actual items and see what's actually impacting you. And I'm eating like once a day. And I don't know why I didn't realize it. I have been allowing myself to get on these tunnels where I'm working. And I look up, like I said earlier, and eight, 10 hours have passed. And that's not healthy. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. So let's talk about what we can do to counteract this. What can we do to break this cycle? One of the things that I'm doing is I have a really bad habit of getting stuck in these tunnels of stress and not popping my head up to drink water or eat as I'm going to take a drink of water right now. Don't be a dick. Cause an interruption in your day. So if you're like me and you're stuck in these stress portals, I love to set alarms on my phone and I don't know why I stopped doing it, but it's, it is back in full practice. I set alarms with my favorite music to it. I have, I'll have to share a playlist with you guys at some point. Stay tuned on my Instagram and my Spotify or not Spotify, TikTok. But I love to have a favorite song in the morning that gets me pumped. I'll have an alarm that goes off every two hours to break up my day. I take that time to jam out to my music, to take a walk outside, to fill up my water bottle, to get a snack or to eat lunch. And it really helps set that tone for me. And then as we get in the evening, I set the alarms to more calmer music. So I have an alarm in the evening that reminds me, okay, it's time to sit the phone down and get off screens and have some family time. And I know that sounds silly. We shouldn't need the reminder, but I'm here to tell you it's okay to need that reminder, especially as parents. There's so much on our plate that we miss our kids growing up because we're so stressed on getting the bills paid and making dinner and cleaning up. And it just, it feels like a lot. And we need those reminders to pause and go play, go have family time, have a family night something like that. So this has been a really great and pivotal practice into pulling myself out of this hustle culture and prioritizing my house. Another really great practice, and I know people hate it. They hate warning people. I used to be one of these people that hated warning people. I just so spiked, like, how can you function that early in the morning? But morning rituals and routines are very important. And I think Again, especially coming from a parent perspective, if you're not a parent, you might have more time throughout your day to dedicate this time. So this may not look like a morning routine for you, but as a parent, and even honestly, even just as a human being, giving time to yourself first, pay yourself first before you start giving your energy to other people, to your job, to your responsibility, to your kids, pay yourself first. Every morning, even if it's only five minutes, it doesn't need it. That's another thing in like the spiritual community, especially. I see so many people that have these two hour morning routines and I envy that. I would love to have that, but I don't think it matters what time I wake up. <laughs> I'm going to have a kid that's up with me or something that's going to interrupt that. And so for me, I like to create a morning routine, even if it's just stretching in bed. I love to do happy baby. If you don't know that yoga pose, go look it up. It's silly and amazing at the same time. It just feels good. So I lay in my bed first thing when I wake up before I even get out, I stretch. Do the big full body stretch. You guys know the best stretch you've had all day. And I guess you just woke up, so it doesn't matter. But anyways, having a really good stretch, do happy baby pose, maybe do some cat cows, sink into your body and just check in. That takes literally, it could take a minute to sit there and just do a few stretches. Give yourself that time. Do something you love in the morning. My favorite thing to do in the mornings is to step outside, 
I have my cup of coffee or tea, depending. Cause I drink coffee. I'm trying this new thing where I'm drinking coffee during certain phases of my cycle because it does impact our hormones a little bit. But I love coffee, so we're not getting rid of it. But I love to like step outside, feel the sun on my face. If it's warm enough, put my, I'm looking out my window as I'm talking, put my toes in the grass. So just take a minute to breathe it in. If I have time or I have someone here to be present with my kids if they're sleeping, I will go for a walk and enjoy it. Other things I like to do in the morning is play video games. Sometimes I wake up and I'll go outside for a couple seconds and come inside, play a video game for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then get my son ready for school, make breakfast, and then start my day. And I know this is going to look different for everyone. So just giving a few examples, it literally, again, five minutes could be do some stretches, brush your teeth, wash your face, get some sort of self-care in, and then start your day. You get to fill your cup first before you start giving your energy to everyone else. And another thing that's really important to remember with hustle culture, no matter where you work, you're replaceable. And it sucks. That's a sucky feeling. But we live in corporate America. At least I live in corporate America. I don't know if you live elsewhere, if it's like that for you guys, but people don't care. They want what they can get out of you. So you get to set the boundaries with that. So see how it's impacting you. And if it's killing you and causing your hormones to go out of whack, set boundaries. And I think this is important to start doing in the workplace. And I see it happening with these new generations coming up and being raised with a fire of seeing people set boundaries. I actually have a really good friend of mine who... um was having a situation at her work where she was literally being bullied and mistreated. And she reported and she set boundaries and said, I will not be treated like this. She also got added two different jobs. And she was like, okay, if you're going to add this extra work for me, then I need to be compensated for that and setting that boundary. And the responses from I'm not saying all older generations are like this, but it was happened to be from an older generation of you should just feel lucky that you have a job and that you're here and you should just deal with it. And that kind of response is not okay. And in order to get out of that hustle culture mentality, we have to create the new environment and we have to set the example. And it's scary sometimes. But the more that you stand in your power and set your boundaries, the more that you're going to show other people and give them permission to do the same. And that is how change happens. So that was speaking more bigger picture. What are some other things we can do? Eat. Because what happens if you don't eat is your body thinks you're starving and it starts storing everything. And it also can elevate those cortisol levels. For me, like I said, I'm not hungry. My cortisol levels are high. I'm not having those hunger cues. So I'm setting those alarms and reminding myself to go fucking eat. My kitchen is right there. I work from home. It's literally... Not that far. It shouldn't be that hard. So I set little reminders. I have snacks around my desk now that I can just grab very easy in case I feel like maybe I feel like I don't have the time to step away or I'm on calls like I know on Wednesdays. I'm on calls all day on Wednesdays. So what do you do? Yeah, set yourself up with snacks so that you know that you're giving your body that energy and that replenish and nourish, nourishment that it needs. Sleep is also really important per sleep and wake cycles for your cortisol levels. And it's probably what's most impacted, I would say, and what causes us to get lost in this cortisol, this stress spiral, when you're not getting enough sleep. And it's so easy to get trapped in insomnia, especially from stress, because you have all these things, you just have this weight on your shoulders. And how do you get out of that trap? Because that weight's still there. That stress is still there. So how do you pull yourself out of it? And I, I don't have all the answers because it's very personal to your experience and what you're going through. But one of the biggest things that have been helpful is taking away screen time. And I know that can be hard. So like some things that you can do if you like to be on your phone. I know Androids have it. I am think Apple has it. I'm not an Apple user. I know some of you are probably going to hate me for that. I'm just not a fan. Not a fan, but I know Android has a filter that you can put on your phone where you have like nighttime mode and it will filter out the blue light. It'll give your phone a little bit of a tint so the colors will look a little off. 
uh, but it'll stop that blue light that causes a release in cortisol because what that blue light tells us when we have screens on at night is it tells us our brain that it's daytime and it's time to release cortisol. And so you'll get that second wind of energy when you're supposed to be sleeping and you ride that wave. And let me tell you, it's addicting. It is. Right? We do get addicted to those kinds of things because it feels good initially. And then we wake up the next day and we're ex fucking exhausted because we didn't sleep. Uh, so, <clears throat> you can try dimming your lights down at night. <clears throat> As I choke on my own spit, guys, it's fine. But yeah, turning your lights down in the evening or off if you can. Having a bedtime routine, just like in the morning, sometimes we need to have that transition period. I actually think we need to have two transition periods in our day. We need to have a transition period when we go from work to home. And this has been, especially if you work from home, having something that tells your body and your brain it is time to switch off work mode and just be home. I light a candle when I work. I have a candle lit right now as I'm recording off to the side. You can't see it. And I can't reach it or I'd show you, but I have a candle lit. And when I finish up my work in my creation mode, I blow out that candle and I sit for a minute as I transition into home. And I think that's a really great practice. It helps. Okay. I need to leave all of my stress and anything work related here. And I will come back to it later. It will be okay for me to go take a break. And sometimes I have to mentally prepare myself and tell myself and have to have a little pep talk to get me to leave it there. And so give yourself a moment to let all those things race, all those to-dos. If you need to write down a to-do list of all the things you need to do when you come back, you can use that time and space to do that. And then have an activity. For me, I run around with my kids and go low on them as soon as I leave my workspace to go into play and cook dinner with them and those kinds of things. But for bedtime, I think it's really good to cleanse your energy. And this can look different for different people. For some people, it's playing some really good music that puts them in a relaxed state. It could be lighting incense or candles. Um, meditating is really great. I love smoke cleansing and like taking the time to call my power back, my energy back before I go to sleep. I love to sit down and have a relaxing environment, play some music, and I pause with myself. And sometimes I say it out loud and sometimes I say it in my mind, but I call back all of my energy from everyone I, who I've given it to. I call it back to myself. I call all of my power back and just reclaim my energy. And again, I know it sounds silly and it's a little woo-woo. I don't know if you're witchy woo-woo or not. It is. It is a little, woo a little, but it goes a long way. And having that affirmation of I stand in my fullest power and I call back all of my energy and oof, it makes a difference to stand in that and to call that back. All of that energy I'm putting into work, all of that stress that I'm giving away, all of this that I'm giving away to other people, all the energy I'm giving my kids, I call it all back to me. And I'm going to stand as myself in my wholeness in this moment as I sleep and rest, calling it all back before it's time for a new day where we're going to be giving it away. So you call it all back before you go to bed, you relish it in the morning, and then you start your day. That's such a great practice to you. bring balance. And as I said, eating, giving your body a consistent schedule of wake up, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, bed. Or even if you just, again, baby steps, you start, I've given so many different options on where to start. Pick one thing. You don't have to do it all at once. Just pick one thing that feels good for you. Maybe you start with a consistent wake up and sleep time. Maybe you start with a consistent breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Creating these consistent containers for your body reminds your body that it's safe. Remind your mind that you're safe, which then allows your nervous system to switch from the action to the rest and digest, which will balance those cortisol levels. You just have to interrupt the stress pattern. I hope that this episode helps you as you navigate hustle culture. And again, I know this was very high level of kind of going into any things, but just sit with it and start to notice how it's impacting your life. And what's one step you can take to break the cycle?